Welcome back to the second example from chapter 10. This is also an angular kinematics problem. And I do want to point out uh, right away that we aren't going to see very many rotational kinematics example videos here in chapter 10 because they really do follow the same structure as all of the chapter 2 videos. So if you really feel like you're struggling with this, it may be worth re-watching some of the chapter 2 examples or coming to office hours to talk through what your specific struggles are. All right, and so in this example, we have a wheel. So again, drawing the picture as we read through the problem is going to be the easiest thing. It was initially turning, so it has an initial angular velocity, and it speeds up. So that means that we have an angular acceleration. All right, so let's start to label the information that we're given. The initial omega, the initial angular velocity, is 8 radians per second. It is already in the appropriate unit, so we don't have to convert anything. And it speeds up to 25 radians per second. That's the final angular velocity, 25 radians per second, in three revolutions. All right, this is really key for us. Three revolutions, we want to make sure we recognize what that is. That is an angular distance, theta, if we say that the starting location was zero. So what that means here is that we're saying that the initial theta is zero radians, and the final theta here is three revolutions, and as always, we must pay attention to units. That's been an important part of our course since chapter one. One revolution on top means we have one revolution on the bottom, two pi radians on top, and you can leave it as six pi or you can calculate what that looks like, 18.85 radians, because the revolution unit goes away. All right, now in part A here, we're being asked to find the angular acceleration. It is really important that we recognize that we cannot use the definition of angular acceleration. I'm going to write it down here, but we cannot use this. And the reason we can't use this is because we don't have time. So this won't work. We need to recognize that the reason that step one and step two is laying out all of the given information is so that right away we can tell when we don't have the right things to use a certain tool in our toolkit. We don't have the time, but we do have a lot of omega and theta information. So let's try the omega theta equation. It's the one that looks like the VX equation from chapter two. So omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha theta minus theta initial. All right, so let's plug in some numbers here. I'm going to bring this up to the top so we don't run out of space. So we have 25 squared equals 8 squared plus 2 times our unknown alpha times 18.85. All right, so we can subtract the 8 squared from both sides. So 25 squared minus 8 squared. All of that is 561. And then 2 times 18.85 or 2 times 6 pi is going to be about 37.7. And the alpha is still there. So I brought this term, 8 squared, which is 64. I subtracted that from both sides. And then we just have to divide by 37.7 on both sides. And we get that alpha is 14.9 radians per second squared. All right. So that's part A. For part B, we can now use that piece of information. Now, this is positive because we're speeding up and our initial angular velocity was also positive. In part B, we're rephrasing the question the way that we're used to doing. We're finding something when something else is true. We're finding the time, that's t, 
in order to reach that final angular speed. So when the omega final is 25 radians per second. You can also use that final um, theta value, but then you're going to have to use the quadratic formula, and that's way more work. This is going to be a lot simpler for us. So find t when omega final is 25 radians per second. That's going to be the omega t equation. It's going to look very similar to the vt equation from chapter 2. So omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times time. So we have 25 equals 8 plus 14.9 t. So we subtract 8 from both sides. I'm going to bring this over here so we've got a little more space, not at the very, very bottom. So 25 minus 8, that's 17, equals 14.9 times t. So we divide both sides by 14.9. And so we get that the time is equal to 1.14 seconds. So it will take just over a second to speed up from 8 radians per second to 25 radians per second if we only have to circle three times to do so. It's a very big angular acceleration, so that time seems reasonable enough to us based on the intuition that we're starting to build in this chapter. That's it for this example. As I said in the previous example, these really should start to look like chapter two problems. Uh, there's really nothing that's different about them except for the labels and units. But the process that we use and the way that the equations really work is very similar, if not identical, to what we saw in chapter two. When we have further examples in this chapter, they're going to be in different topics. So I look forward to continuing on in the chapter with you together. See you in those next videos.